Hey there folks! In this video we'll be constructing a case for the Reproduction Mark 8 mini computer. In the previous video we built a power supply for the computer and we'll install it into the case in this video. The Mark 8 did not come with an actual case and did not recommend one. But there was a case shown on the front page of the Radio Electronics Magazine July 1974 issue. The plan is to create a similar replica of it. The idea is to build an aluminum frame and cover it with aluminum sheets of metal. I drew up some ideas on a piece of paper that I had been thinking of. I then created better drawings with dimensions. We have frame pieces, both vertical and horizontal, and front and back panels. I then created CAD and step files based on the drawings and uploaded them into PCBWay for fabrication. PCBWay delivered it in a wooden box, which by the way is pretty nice and will be used to store other things in it. All the pieces were carefully wrapped. After unwrapping them and putting them together, this is what we ended up with. A solid case. But it did have some weight to it due to the amount of metal used. I'll include a link in the description on instructions on how to get this case fabricated. On the instructions page, click Add to Cart for the vertical member. Select CNC machining, quantity of 4 uh, for each corner. Aluminum as the material. Scroll down and select Yes for the threads and uh, tapped holes. And then upload the vertical member PDF document. Click Submit Request. Next, click Add to Car for the horizontal 9 inch piece. Select CNC machining, quantity of 4, aluminum as the material. Scroll down and select Yes for threads and tapped holes. Then upload the horizontal member PDF document. Click Submit Request. Then click Add to Car for the horizontal 15 and a quarter inch piece and follow the same instructions as the 9 inch piece. Click Add to Car for the front panel and select Sheet Metal at the top. Select Quantity of 1, Aluminum as the material. And then select the standard thickness of 1.5 mm. Click Submit Request. Repeat the same process for the rear panel. Now that we have all the parts, we can start the construction of the case. We'll begin with the front panel frame. Place the two vertical pieces and the two longer horizontal pieces to form a rectangle. Then place the front panel over top of them. Mark the screw holes using a ruler and pencil and then drill them out. Since the threads are made for number 10 screws, I'll use a quarter inch drill bit which will give us some slack. Install the 8 screws to finish the front side of the case. We'll repeat the same process for the rear panel.
You may have noticed that my front panel is painted and contains switches. I will be posting a video about the construction of the front panel and switches in the next video. Now that we have both uh, the front and the rear panels, let's connect them together using the shorter horizontal pieces. Place the case on the side, on a flat surface, and then lay the side aluminum pieces over the top. Mark the locations of the holes and drill them out as before. Install the 8 screws to keep the side piece in place. Repeat the process for the other side. The case is starting to take shape. The next step is to attach the bottom panel. Place the case upside down and then place the bottom panel, which is uh, 1 8 inch thick, over top of it. You may need to screw up the case by making sure that each side is flush with the panel. Then mark the locations of the screw holes and drill them out as before. Attach the bottom panel to the case with 8 screws. Repeat the same process for the top panel, but don't install it just yet. We'll attach 4 rubber feet to the bottom of the case. Make a mark 1 and 3 8 inch from the sides and 1 and a half from the top and bottom for the screw holes for each rubber foot. Drill the holes using a quarter inch drill bit. Be sure the locations are accurate as we'll be placing the Mark 8 backplane over top of the two screws. Attach the feet using number 10 24 by 1 inch screws. Turn the case right side up and place the Mark 8 backplane on the right side of the case, over the screws of the rubber feet. You may need to carefully drill the backplane mounting holes to fit the number 10 screws. Then mark the location of the remaining two mounting holes and drill them out in the same manner. Be sure to remove the backplane first. Attach the screws using a single nut and then place the Mark 8 backplane over the top of them to verify its placement. If the backplane fits well, remove it and tighten the nuts. We'll install the backplane later. Follow the same process for the power supply and power transformer. The placement of them is not critical. I place mine on the left side, closer to the back. I also install a barrier strip for the high voltage line. Use 12 gauge wire to wire up the rear power plug and switch. I'm using a wire knife for the switch temporarily. The ground for the power plug attaches to the case itself. Notice also that I have a 1 amp fuse on the load line. This is important. And just a reminder, be careful when working with high voltage. It can kill you if handled improperly. Once the power components are installed, lower the Mark 8 computer into its position and fasten with nuts. You may need to remove some of the boards to reach the screws. Run the power lines from the power supply to the Mark 8 backplane. Some older backplanes do not have the power connector. If you have one of those boards, you will have to wire it up directly to the pins on the bus. Pin 3 is ground, pin 6 is positive 5 volts and pin 7 is negative 9 volts. Use zip ties to keep things organized. I also installed a Barber Coleman fan to the left of the power supply to keep it cool. This may not be required, but the power supply does get quite hot, and I don't want the voltage regulator to fail. I used some rubber spacers to keep it from vibrating too much. We are done! Now is the time for the moment of truth. The power is on, the fan is spinning, and the computer is running. 
Although I have not tested the functionality of the entire computer, I think we are good so far. In the next video, we'll assemble the front panel and then install the top panel as well. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Have a wonderful day.